Mark Passio has some interesting things to say about the sun, so I'm going to share them with you. Just keep in mind, when the sun is more active, we see an increase in wars and false flags. Although not a lot of people are aware of this, although I did mention it to Mark, and I did put on a presentation at a conference that he helped organize in 2013 in Philadelphia. So while he may not have mentioned uh, the wars that break out, uh, it is something that we discussed in the past. It's just not something that most people think about. So this is something that I have been discussing for years. It's not something that's commonly discussed. But what he's saying about the spiritual component to the sun is important as well. So I'm sharing this because we're about to see an increase in solar activity this year and an increase in what I believe will be false flags leading us into conflict. And so I want to share this idea and then we'll go to the clip. And the idea is that these events are there to take us away from a deeper spiritual experience, from growing spiritually, from growing spiritually uh, as souls on this planet, from increasing our soul voltage. Because if we're distracted by wars and racism and hatred and bigotry uh, and being led by algorithms uh, and being led into these conflicts, uh, then we're not in a moral state of consciousness. Okay, if we're being manipulated um, through these algorithms and through the internet, and uh, if people are not in a peaceful state of consciousness uh, and doing something productive with their energy, uh, then they can be led into violence and conflicts. And a lot of people unconsciously are. As I've been discussing for years, there are uh, more people that uh, commit suicides during these periods uh, and do drugs uh, and get into fights, right? They don't even need to necessarily be led uh, via propaganda into a war to be having a war in their own community or in a bar or in their home, okay? But ultimately, this is something that is spiritual, this connection that we have to the sun. And if we were living more in balance with nature, uh, we would be more productive when we are experiencing these solar cycles. Okay, so there is the potential for us to be more productive when the sun is more active. But we have to exercise discipline. And you need to know the ways in which events are manufactured during periods in which the sun is more active to keep you in the matrix trance. I'm one of the few that brings you this perspective on the false flags during the solar storms. And now, a few words from Mark Passio. Check in on it maybe once a week or once every other week. But um, I have to tell you, um, what the sun is doing, it's really picking up activity, and there's a lot of interesting activity happening, especially in the realm of coronal holes. There's been some CMEs, which are coronal mass ejections, and some flares in the uh, M class, uh, and maybe one or two up into the X class um, range. Nothing that could pose any kind of a threat to the planet at all. It would have to be probably 20 orders of magnitude greater to do that, and directly Earth-directed, uh, that activity would have to be. Uh, we haven't had anything like that, so it's it's no... It's no activity of concern, but we're just uh, beginning to ramp up in this solar cycle toward a solar maximum in several years. Uh, and it's uh, it's right on time. I mean, we were in a kind of an extended solar minimum over the last 11 years or 13 years or so. And uh, now the sun's starting to pick up activity. So we're going to see a little bit more, um, you know, uh, warming of the, of the planet because that usually happens when the sun starts to go into high uh, activity regarding um, sunspots, uh, coronal openings, uh, uh, coronal uh, uh, so solar flares, coronal mass ejections, things like that. Um, so, uh, but it's uh, kind of right on timing with the sun's natural cycle. So if you study that and you have been for many years, what we're seeing happen on the sun right now is generally no surprise and Nothing, no, nothing to be, uh, you know, bring up any alarmist uh, thoughts or, or activity. It's uh, pretty normal and average for the ramping up of a, a solar cycle, in my estimation, from what I understand. Can that increase consciousness, do you think, and help 
You know, I do. Um, I think that more activity on the sun actually equates to and is directly synchronized with more consciousness activity on the earth. And how could it not? Uh, the sun is the life of the solar system. When it's more active, I think people are more active. When it cools down and goes into a quiet period where there's not a lot of um, solar activity and sunspots and, you know, uh, flares, uh, human consciousness actually kind of trails off a little bit. I've always correlated human activity and consciousness with solar activity. Um, and I just think that that is a direct... Um, correlation and signal that the sun is sort of a being it's 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 a massive spiritual being and really every truly ancient uh you know culture that had a mystical tradition and a uh was part of uh you know the mystery tradition teachings said as much and told us that the sun was like a you know a super being you know a a macrobial being that is really providing and nurturing life in this whole solar system. And I tend to align with that worldview. Um, and I think that's, you know, why if it really gets too stagnant, the sun comes in and does the, the true great reset at some point. When there's stagnation of evolution, the sun will fire a kill shot toward us and say, well, you had your time, now your time is up. And it'll say, Here's the real Great Reset. That's not going to be Schwab's Great Reset. It's going to be the true Great Reset. Uh, I think that ultimately will, at some point in the distant future, come from the sun. I've said it on the podcast many times, that if you know things get really that bad, the universe doesn't tolerate eternal slavery. It eventually sends a rock or it sends a big flare, and it, it does the true reset on the planet. Because nature abhors that kind of a vacuum and an eternal state of non-movement. And so it sends something in to shake it up and creates the movement that it needs. That's why we don't long-term really get to refuse the lesson. The lesson's going to get imparted no matter how egotistical we are or how long we make it take or how much suffering we go through to make it make the lesson sink in. Instead of a kill shot, there could be maybe a consciousness shot from the creator. I don't, I don't rule that out either. I don't rule that out, but I don't know whether it's trying to do the work for us. But um, I think that these little uh, activities that we see on a daily basis, um, if we watch their progression in, in the solar cycle, um, I think we would recognize the correlation. You know, there, there is a correlation if you study it long term enough. And um, this is why be, the, the globalists and the social engineers really know how ignorant people are of all these forms of science, you know, um, and they realize that people don't do that homework. And so they can easily trick them and lead them into a state a mindset of fear, you know, so. Um, you know, the the idea is the more ignorant the population is, the easier it is to fool them and lead them into fear and get them to give up their rights because of, quote, climate change, when it's just a natural solar progression within the known solar cycle that w we have been observing as a species for decades and decades. And, you know, if anybody in the modern world is paying attention, they know that this is just something that is part of nature. Yeah, for sure. I just, I just think since COVID, like in my town, there are so many more people I associate with that are awake. I just mm -hmm. thought maybe there was a, a bit of a consciousness shift because of sun activity it might be increasing and there might be some hope there. But like, I, I agree with you with that. We'll see. I mean, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hinge all my bets on that dynamic, but I'm not going to say that I rule it out. I'm not going to say I'm dismissive of that. Um, it very well could go in that direction because of the type of energy that is being emitted from the sun at this period. Look at it like a wave, right? Instead of looking at it something that makes something happen, look at it like something that assists 
if you know the cycle. So if you know high tide and low tide, right, and you know strong waves are coming into the shore, they're hitting the shore mercilessly, and the wind is directed inward toward the shore, right, you know that's not a good time to go take a rowboat and try to row it out past the breakers. You're going to get clobbered. Now, it's true that you may still be able to do it, but you're going to expend way more energy and time than you would if you waited until it's low tide and the sea is relatively calm and there's only a couple of small breaking waves and you could easily row out past it. Now, if you observe that cycle over and over and over, you'll know when is a good time to take your boat and row it out past the breakers and when is not. It's the same thing when it comes to the sun and consciousness. So I would say this is the time to press hard because if the, the waves are assisting us and there's like a, even maybe like a, a riptide flowing out to the ocean, you get, get in your rowboat and you get right out there. No problem, right? So maybe because of the types of energy that's, that are energies that are being emitted from the sun right now, this is an opportunity. This is a time to go with that flow of energetic, um, you know, dynamic and consciousness and really, you know, uh, put the pedal to the metal. So I, I would agree with that perspective.